Well, you just wonder if they're so clever and control the weather and can manipulate the weather and break droughts and give farmers rain. Why don't they break the drought in New South Wales? Why don't they send clouds to rain on the 1.1 million hectares of land that's been burnt in northern New South Wales? The only conclusion you're left with to answer the question is that it's deliberate, that they're actually burning the country and scorching the people off the land to drive them into the city. We can bring in the oceanic rain, and we need to be conscious it's not about delivering rain on land, it's about nurturing a rain system that can promote agriculture and protect the people involved. So in all cases, we want to make sure we don't get flooding, but we can deliver timely rain in a gentle soaking manner into agricultural targets. Technology relies on a signal that, we, that we're able to generate that um, triggers a response from atmospheric patterns. So we're able to observe this using satellite meteorology, extensively available now to everyone who's got access to broadband internet. But we're able to um, utilise that signal sent in sequence to generate a um, incremental deviation in the flow path of these oceanic atmospheric rivers. So the source is the ocean, of course. The vapour um, precipitable moisture flow is in the atmosphere. The winds drive this with the pressure systems adjusting the path of least resistance. But our technology is able to interface that and hack into it, if you like, and make some micro adjustments to allow deviations to occur in the flow pathway. This is how we broke the drought in Australia in 2005. This is how we put out the fires of Victoria from Black Saturday in 2009. This is how we delivered rain in the desert in Saudi Arabia in 2009.